Hey, what's up? So this is a new series about Django and React Redux Toolkit. So this is gonna be a, a long series. So let's just start, right? And it's based on this uh, poll that I created six days ago or a week ago. So yeah, this is start. So first thing, I'm gonna open my terminal. I'm gonna go here, then project, then. On the stack, Django React. This is where I will put the code, and I will put a link in the description for the repo if you want to check the code out. So here I will have two folders. The first one is the React client, and to generate that, I will use Create React app. So you, I will type npx create React app. Then I will give it the name of the app. So React client. React client. Now template. I will give it, I think, type script with something like this. Uh, I can actually search in my history, in the command history. I, you can click Control R. This will work if you are on Mac or Ubuntu. Now, if I type npx, this will give me like the first search result. If I want to scroll over them, I can click Control R again. As you can see, it will go and uh, try to find other search results. So the, the one I am looking at, at is this one. Create React app, React client, this is the name. Uh, and this is the template Redux TypeScript. This will install, I can open it, so I'll just show you what this will do. This will create a TypeScript React project, as you can see, with Redux toolkit installed. This is React Redux. Can't see. Yeah, this is the Redux toolkit. So yeah, this is this is what we will be using on the front end. So on the back end, let's generate the Django project. So I'm gonna go back, I'll create a console, and I will create a folder called Django, right? Django API, and I will go there and I will generate my app there, but I'll just give you a quick overview. You need to have pip installed, and pip will be automatically installed. You don't need to install it. If you have these versions of Python, if you can see. And to make sure you have it, you will type python dash m for module, then pip dash dash version. I think this will give you the version. Yeah, mine is 21.1.1. So if you do this, then you have pip installed. The second thing, I will be using virtual environments. Um, I will be using this package. So to install it, you will do pip install, sorry, python dash m pip install virtual env. I already have it, so this will be very fast. Um, like this. By the way, we used to download pip globally because I, I actually have it. As you can see globally, but now you can just type. It will be downloaded when you download Python, which is very nice, as you can see. Yeah. Anyway, so after you install, after you have Python and pip, it will be installed automatically. You then install virtual environments, or creating virtual environments, and uh, then we we will install Django. So I'll put a link in the description for these links. So you will do it like this in Mac or uh, Linux, Python, the same thing, dash m, then pip install Django, and Windows actually Pi will point to the same Python interpreter, as you can see. Uh, they both use the same thing. No, this one is older. Okay. It, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna just do this. So npm, or Python dash m, pip install Django. This will install Django uh, and you will be able to use it globally from anywhere. To use it, you will type Python, Python dash m Django. This will give you these like available commands. If you see this, your installation have worked uh, right. And uh, make sure you are on the correct path you want to create this project in. Then type Python dash m Django start project. So. Django projects, 
are split it into multiple apps. That's why you will see app and the project. Project is the Django project itself. Uh, it will be split it down to multiple apps. That's the idea. Of course, I need to give it a name. I will give it API. And this is it. Now it will be generated. So let's open this folder with Visual Studio Code. It will be in a different screen for me. And here it is. Um, I will actually... I think if you go back, I will change how this will look like. I will move this up here. Um, let's just open it here with the file system. Yeah, I would have it like this. It's much uh, nicer. So, CD there, open the Visual Studio Code, here it is. Now, I will create a virtual environment for this project. So, I will type Python-M, then virtual env. I will call it venv. This is how people usually name it. Now, we need to install some dependencies. And we need to activate the virtual environment so the dependencies we install got, will be installed inside this virtual environment, not globally, like we did with Django uh, area and virtual env. We need to install another Django version inside this virtual environment and freeze our dependencies. So anyone actually check out this code will install the correct dependencies, right? I think this makes sense. So Python. Or to activate the virtual environment in Windows, you will go like you'll do that like this. Then activate. As you can see, the terminal will point out that uh, we have a virtual environment available or activate. To deactivate that, just type uh, deactivate, and that's it. Okay. Now, Python dash m install or dash m pip install Django. This will now install it here inside VNV, library, site packages, it will be here installed. Um, let's just wait. It's similar to node module and uh, NPM, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit similar. As you can see now, Python is installed and it's a 3.2.4. So let's now freeze our dependency so anyone else Check out, checking out this code will know which versions we are using and which packages. So Python and pip freeze. This will print out our packages as you can see, or our dependencies, Django 3.2. And I will show you a trick. You see people usually do this, then requirements.txt. What this operator do, I think it's called pipe. It will get the standard output from this like tool of this CLI tool and put it in, put the output inside this file. This is what people usually do. And yeah, it's here. As you can see, nothing in the terminal appeared like before. Everything got just uh, printed out here, which is very nice. Uh, I'm not sure if I typed this correctly, but <laughs> I'm going to check out. Uh, yeah, I always write it uh, wrong. So yeah, that's it. So let's actually now run this code. To run it in Django, you will use this manage.python. And if you come from PHP or Laravel background, this is the, the artisan file. It's exactly the same, does the same thing. Everything you will do from here. So Python, manage.py, um, run, save. And go here, there, you will see it. So yeah. This means we run our Python correctly, our Django app correctly. Let's go to the React. Oops. Yeah, I, I think you got the idea. You can close the video. Okay, I'm going to start. And this will also run. And this is how we will be running the code uh, throughout this series. So in the next video, I will override the, the default user module in Django and create our first migrations uh, and that's it bye bye